Welcome back everyone. This is going to be a walkthrough of when I first started building the pond. Once I had an idea of how I wanted the pond to look like, um, I began digging. Once everything looked good, I put down the underlay or underliner. Now this is important because it will help protect the actual liner from any rocks, small piece of glass that might be on the dirt, anything sharp. I looked around for the best prices and the dimen dimensions of, that I needed for the pond. Uh, this is where I ended up getting my pond liner and underlay from. Now Home Depot does sell pond liners, but they're actually pretty thin. Um, the thing that I was worried was that the pond liner was going to break, um, but this is an option. I took some pictures so you can see the difference between the liner that I bought from Home Depot and the liner that I bought from Webb's Water Garden, which is 45 mil, a lot thicker. This is what I ended up doing with the pond liner that I bought from Home Depot. Um, I screwed in some 2x12s, I laid some mats at the bottom, and put the pond liner. And my kids are having a blast in here. One of the first things that I did to my pond once I had laid the pond liner was I filled the edges with rocks. I even bought the foam sealant to help keep the rocks in place. Here it is. I ended up buying about three or four of these because I wanted to make sure that the rocks did not collapse into the pond or break apart. A uh, pretty good product. Before I even bought my koi, I actually bought a dollar's worth of goldfish and I threw them in the pond to see if they would survive. Once I saw that they were not dying, I went, in, I went ahead and bought some koi off of Craigslist. The pond actually started out pretty good, uh, but over time I realized that the rocks were actually keeping all of the waste and debris stuck in place. The water started getting dirty, algae started to grow and because the way the pond was set up grass and dirt kept falling into the pond once i made up my mind i began to remove all of the rocks from the pond the water level is pretty low and you can barely see the koi at the bottom pretty nasty I didn't have a place to put the koi and other fish uh, in a separate holding area. So they were here for a couple of weeks until I finished digging out the edges. If I would have known better, I would have installed this barrier from the very beginning. Not only will everything be leveled, but it will be a lot higher than the dirt level. So it will minimize the amount of dirt and debris that falls into your pond. Now with all the rocks taken out of the pond and the barrier that I added, the pond actually looks bigger and deeper. Now one cool thing about this is that now I can walk around the edges without worrying of the rocks or the dirt underneath the pond liner from collapsing. These are two pictures of the four inch PVC pipes. Uh, they're 10 feet long and then on the right is just me uh, the beginning of when I started drilling holes to put the net cups in place 
Looking at the picture on the left hand side, you can see the barrier of rocks where I first started to prevent the fish from crossing the little border. And on the picture to the right, you can see the beginning of the aquaponic system. Instead of using the foam sealant to keep the rocks in place, I took advantage of the fact that the rocks were dry. I rolled up little balls of cement or concrete, whatever you want to call it, and I used it to connect rocks together wherever they were touching. This seems to be working perfect because the rocks don't move. Because of the area where I wanted to install the aquaponic system, I didn't have much room, so I bought these fence posts. And they're pretty easy. You literally just hammer them into the ground and they stay in place. I looked online and they do sell the accessories for the fence T-post, but I was, gonna, I was going to need quite a few of them and they were pretty expensive, so I went the cheap route. I bought the hanger straps and they've been doing just fine for the past two months or so. I had some electrical wire laying around uh, in my shed. So I put them to good use. I stripped the yellow wire and inside there's three individual wires and that is what I used to keep the tomato and bell pepper plants from tipping over. This is what I was talking about in the first video. If the 55 gallon swirled filter the barrel does not have a cap it's exactly like the five gallon bucket to the left if someone falls in there head first there's not enough room to turn around and come back out especially little kids I like these uni seals simply because once you put the PVC pipe through them it creates a watertight lock sort of deal and it does not leak. This floating pond trellis is actually pretty neat. I really like it. I looked around and they don't have something similar out there. They do have the floating pond planters or little floating islands where you can put some water plants. Uh, but I did something different. I installed a trellis. Um, pretty cool. If I knew people or where to go, I would actually try and see if I can patent this, uh, make a product to sell to people. Um, but it is what it is. If you can make money from doing something similar like this, go for it. Just give me a shout out and say, hey, thanks for the idea. This is the bottom of the floating pond trellis. Uh, I need to make some changes. As you can tell, the tomato plants have no roots. The koi just tear them apart. So something needs to be done before my plants die. One of the first things that I planted was bell peppers and tomatoes that I had growing in the dirt. The picture on the left is from the bell peppers. As you can tell, they have small root systems. Water flows pretty well. The picture on the right is the tomato plant. Now, as you can tell, the roots are coming out just about everywhere and something I've had to do quite often is I have to keep cutting the roots if not they do they have um, 
clogged up the aquaponic system, causing water to spill.